Star Wars apparently still exists. You thought that Disney had just taken this popular franchise out in the backyard like old Yeller and put a bullet in its head. But no, it's still limping on. Uh, Star Wars has just transed a clone trooper. What is a clone trooper? I had to ask Professor Jacob about this. And he gave me his uh, apparently expensive model uh, clone trooper helmet. It's different than a stormtrooper, which are in the original movies. Uh, but it looks kind of like the Stormtrooper. But the difference, I'm going to put this this nerd relic down here. The difference is the clone trooper in the in the lore all descend from one person. It's, it's clones of this guy, Jango Fett, whose son, Boba Fett, is like a bounty hunter or I don't know, whatever. Uh, so this is, this is important to transing a character because they're all genetically exactly the same, all of these clone troopers. So how is it the case that in this new book, uh, which is a canon book, it's not just fan fiction, it's a canon book, Star Wars, The Secrets of the Clone Troopers, it is revealed that there's this trans clone trooper. Captain Rex describes the trans clone this way, quote, when one of our kind expressed her gender identity differently than her fellow troopers, she feared she'd have to hide who she truly was inside. Fortunately, her brothers in the Seven Sky Corps gave her the name Sister as a constant reminder that she belonged. Okay, so it's silly to inject this modern gender ideology in a galaxy far, far away. But but Star Wars is just a, you know, it's a myth, right? And myths tell us something not just about a distant past that may or may not have literally existed, but they tell us about our own times. That's what they what's their, what they're for. So... Professor Jacob, my nerd producer, uh, observed, it's kind of silly that the, this clone trooper has the trans flag on his helmet because it's a galaxy far, far away, you know, a long, long time ago. And so how do they have the exact same trans colors as we have now? That's the least of it, guys. This is actually kind of based. This is actually pretty right wing because by transing a clone, Star Wars, wittingly or unwittingly, is admitting that transgenderism is not biological. Star Wars is admitting that transgenderism is a social phenomenon. It's, it's a product of environment and a defect of the will, but it's not biological. If Star Wars had transed any other character in the entire universe, they would have been preserving pretty much all of the transgender ideology. By transing a clone a character that is biologically of necessity identical to all the other clone troopers, Star Wars is asserting that transgenderism is not biological, is not natural, is not innate, is not, that transgenderism is a social fad and a social phenomenon uh, brought about by environmental factors and the individual will. And I totally agree. So accidentally, sometimes... Artists uh, tell the truth, even when, they, when they're trying not to. Text Knowles to 989898. Kamala Harris's economic plan is a disaster. Get ready for massive tax hikes, all so she can add almost $2 trillion to a current $2 trillion deficit. You might be thinking it's time to make more of your savings tax sheltered and inflation sheltered. This is where I trust Birch Gold Group to help. Birch Gold will assist you in converting an existing IRA or 401k into an IRA in gold, and you don't pay a penny out of pocket. Just text the word Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S, to 989898. Get a free info kit on gold. There's no obligation, just information on fortifying your savings before the crazy really hits. As the exclusive gold partner of The Daily Wire for the past eight years, an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, thousands of happy customers, you can trust Birch Gold, too. Text Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S, to the number 989898 for your free info kit Today, I myself have a decent chunk of my portfolio in gold, and I'm very happy that I do. Today, in particular, might be a good time to look into diversifying. Text Knowles to 989898. Hey, Michael. Hey, Mr. Nostradamus. As an aspiring 14-year-old who wants to be deeply involved in politics in the future, and as someone who is currently writing a book about politics and about how the radical left have destroyed this country and destroyed its Christian and traditional values that it was initially built upon. I was just going to ask, exactly, how do you write a book about politics? How do you form a book about politics? And since I know you have a lot of experience with writing books about politics, I wanted to ask you that. Okay, thank you, Michael. Thank you for all that you do in saving this country from the radical left. Thank you. 
Very kind. Good question. You're obviously intelligent and precocious and ambitious and serious. So that's all good stuff. That's why you want to write a book. And that is why you should not write a book. Eventually, you can write a book. You should not write a book at 14. No 14-year-old should write a book. It, the reason for that is uh, you have not read enough books to write a book. You have not lived enough life to have the uh, experiences that are helpful in writing a book. Your brain has not developed to the point that you are at your prime powers to write a book. And you probably don't have a sufficient command of uh, grammar and syntax and English composition to write a book. It's no knock on you. No 14-year-old does. I think even of John Stuart Mill, who I, th I think he spoke Latin by three and ancient Greek by five. You know, this is one of the, the last really almost almost perfectly educated men in the West. He had, he had a glaring omission in his, in his education because he never learned anything about religion, which is why his philosophy was bunk. But it's still uh, otherwise a, a pretty well-educated guy. Uh, even he should not write a book at 14. <laughs> Nobody should write a book at, at 14. So what could you do? You should read a lot. You should read books that are challenging, that, that are books that maybe an 18-year-old or a 22-year-old should read. If you're this precocious, you should read I don't know, oh, just off the top of my head, The Closing of the American Mind after, uh, by Alan Bloom, The After Virtue by Alistair McIntyre, uh, even, I don't know, Escape from Skepticism by Christopher Derrick. These are just books that are coming to mind. Uh, you, you should read those. C.S. Lewis would be is really good for a 14-year-old to read because his ideas are really profound, but he's, he's writing in a way that is somewhat accessible. Read all that stuff. If you want to write, write an essay. Learn how to write essays. Most books should be essays. Most essays should never be written. So try that. Write an essay. Write a letter. Write, you know, work on your composition. This is a good time to work on your command of the English language. Uh, buy Strunk and White. Buy The Elements of Style. Read that. I, sometimes I get a little, I'm a little tough on my colleagues because they don't, they haven't read like the basics of English composition. And these are books that it's not even their fault. They're not really taught in school as much anymore. But if you read the Strunk and White's Elements of Style, which is like 50 pages or something, if you read that, you will be better at writing than most adults today. But do all that stuff now. 14 is not the time to write a book. 14 is the time to read books. That was a good clip. Now, wa ba 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 Oh, hey. Beep, ba boom. Ring that bell, and we'll see you next time.